Hello everyone, happy Macedonia Monday and welcome to the newest episode of Mario's History Talks. In today's episode, we will be discussing an obscure but very heroic moment in our nation's history. While I can wager a guess that many of you, if not all of you, have heard of the Battle of Michkinkamen along with its hero, Pituguli, not many of you have heard of the second Battle of Michkinkamen along with its hero, a man by the name of Agir Marinchev. Agir Marinchev was born in Ohrid in 1870. Like many of the time period, he was a school teacher turned revolutionary. By the time of the Edenton Uprising in 1903, he was under the direct command of another famous Macedonian revolutionary named Christo Uzunov. In fighting in the Ohrid region, him and his group of men did see some success in battles, but as we all know, the Edenton Uprising was a failure. And for many of us, that's where the story ends. We're really not sure what happens afterwards. Well, it was, in a word, terror. The Turkish army now needed to defeat, humiliate, and further psychologically subjugate the Macedonian people, particularly the ones in the regions where the rebellions had occurred. As such, the Ohrid Revolutionary Committee formed a refugee camp in Rashanets, a region of Ohrid. The refugee camp was comprised of 18 villages, 2,000 villagers, and all defended by 120 committee, among which was Agir Marinchev and his group of men. Now, alongside the committee, the Rashanets region also had a natural defense given its mountain topography. So, for the time being, their position was almost impenetrable. However, this all changed on August 30th, 1903. A local villager from Merechitsa found a path around the mountains and handed it over to the Turks. And much like the 300 Spartans at the Battle of Thermopylae, they soon woke up to the full might and fury of an invading army. Picture, 3,000 Turkish soldiers enveloping a region defended by only 120 komiti. Five cannons were placed in the nearby village of Kuratica to pound and pulverize their defenses. And then, in order to further flush out the committee, they set the entire mountain on fire. Now, this is where Agir and his group of six men take the scene. Agir knew he needed to give the villagers a fighting chance. He decided to stay back and take on the Turkish Asker or officer hold him back until the 100 remaining committee could secure the escape of the remaining villagers. Now by this point, the mountain had been set on fire, so they retreated temporarily to the surrounding caves. And according to the villagers that have seen the caves, the committee, while waiting, uncertain of their fates, decided to simply carve their names into the cave walls and leave behind some spent bullets, just so they could be remembered and what happened on that day. They fought for more than 11 hours, back to back, and during which time, a lot of villagers did in fact escape. However, by the end, with their position now atop of the mountain, and the blazing fire and the Turkish army coming after them, they knew their only option was to take their own lives. This heroism is sung about to this very day, particularly in the song, Ozdula Idet Eden Lad Voivoda. What's interesting about this song is that not only names the committee who sacrificed themselves that day, but also the name of the villager who betrayed them, Velian Slavisky from Rechica. He is cursed and denounced in the song for betraying the committee and profiting from the Turks. And his descendants have never seen their infamy die down, not even to this day. They either try to deny their association with him, or flat out prove his innocence altogether. If you don't believe me, ask yourself why former Minister of Finance Trajce Slavisky only listed his place of birth as Ohrit, when in actuality he's from, you guessed it, Rechica. However, there is a lesson to be had here. Agir and his group of men, they had every opportunity to escape. They didn't have to sacrifice their lives. But Agir reportedly replied back very calmly, No, my place is here with my people. 
So now that we're fighting for Macedonia's liberty once more, where will your place be? Will you profit from the situation and work with those that seek to destroy us? Or will you calmly take your place among the ranks with your people? That's something to think about. But in the meantime, folks, I want you to stay safe, keep fighting for Macedonia, and thank you again, as always, for watching Mario's History Talks. Until next time.